Well, good morning. We're so thankful you're here. So thankful you're spending your weekend with us. Again, if I hadn't got to meet you, my name's Todd. Please come up, introduce yourself in the lobby. If you're guests with baptism, folks, come let us. We'd love to get to know you. My wife, Avery, and I would love uh, to at least shake your hand and see you and greet you and meet you. Uh, we have a baptism banner over on the right side of the lobby as you exit where you can get some pictures. Man, mark this day down. Anchor it to your faith and to your life. And uh, Man, we're excited. We're excited about the ministry of the church. Uh, God has done so much over the last 30 days. I heard nothing but great reports uh, from this Friday night. We had Awakens Women's Conference, and the girls brought the house down, and it was amazing. And uh, man, just so thankful for all that God is, is doing uh, in and through the ministry here. And I, I won't keep you long today. Um, I'll get us out on time. I do want to dive into part number three of this series uh, we've been in called Regret Proof Your Life. Now, I, I will say this if you are a guest, it's kind of like going to the gym. If you go to the gym one time, you're going to end up sore, okay? If you go to the gym every day, you're going to end up shredded, all right? So uh, we're a Bible church uh, around here. It means we preach the truth of God's word. And uh, sometimes those truths confront our behavior, and we're okay with that. Because in, 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 this, uh, in this building, this is still the word of God. Sin still separates them. Jesus brings us back into right relationship as we repent and turn to Christ. And so I just want to encourage you, if you're looking for a home church, this may be it. Uh, come back, and especially this series, because I think we all kind of um, understand that we can end up in situations uh, where we have regrets. We can end up saying, I wish I would have or I wish I wouldn't have. Uh, I, I probably should have. I probably shouldn't have. And so we've been looking at biblical truths to help us in this area, uh, how to regret-proof our life. And there's really practical stuff. Uh, week one, we talked about how to defeat fear. Uh, last week was really fun. Uh, we looked at how to quit complaining. Uh, and if you weren't here, you can go watch it online. And, and today, I want to go to Romans chapter 15. If you got your Bibles, grab them. If you got your message notes, grab them. Romans chapter 15, and I want to grab one verse from Galatians, Galatians chapter 6. Romans chapter 15 and Galatians chapter 6, both written by the Apostle Paul. In chapter 15 of the book of Romans, Paul has, has taken 15 chapters. He's unpacked doctrine. Uh, he's told them how to be saved. He's told them that, that we are all fall short of the glory of God, but God sent his one and only son to die that we might have life everlasting. Uh, uh, Paul has broke down. Um, you In Romans 8, you are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. In Romans chapter 12, that you need to be a living sacrifice to the God in heaven. So he's broke all that down. And he gets to the end and he says, hey, you're going to need a little bit more information to complete all of this. And he says, y'all going to need to do a better job of getting along. Um, and that doesn't mean we tolerate sin. It means we're going to have to, if you are a stronger Christian, don't look down on weaker Christians because you wasn't always the way you are today. So we want to help everybody up. He says, you're going to have to look to the scriptures and grow in your faith to keep moving forward because there are going to be seasons where you're tired, seasons where you want to quit. So I want to read these verses to you. Let's pick it up. Romans 15, verse 4. For everything that was written in the past, now for Paul, that would be the Old Testament and a few letters of the gospel that are circulating at the time. For everything that was written in the past, that would be for us, Old Testament and New Testament, was written to teach us so that through the, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide we might have hope. May the God who gives this endurance and this encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had so that with one mind and one voice, we may glorify the God and, our, and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I want to slide over just a few pages to the right. Galatians 9, Apostle Paul writing it again. I want you to see the connection where he says this. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Can you say amen for God's word? Amen. I, want, I want to preach to you for just a few moments from this title, Winning Against Weariness. Winning Against Weariness. Because if I had to guess what I know about you and what I know about me is there is something in life that is wearing you out. It's wearing you out. 
Let me tell you something. If you got kids under five, your kids are probably wearing you out. Come on, parents, say amen. Oh, if you older than 65, you probably just wore out because you old. Come on, say amen. <laughs> like, I eat, yeah, she's like, yeah, that's why, hey, that, that's why they eat lunch, that's why they eat dinner at four and uh, wake up at four. They don't want to be that way. You know, uh, they're like, hey, can you come to the early service? You're retired. No, we're tired. We done did all this. No, you know, we'll come to church. <laughs> yeah, or something. Hey, some, hey you, some, some of you is your spouse wearing you out, right? You can go ahead and look at them. Go ahead and look at them. Don't say anything. Just look at them. You can amen real loud when I say it if your spouse is wearing you out. Some of us, it's the problems that are wearing us out. Some of us, it's the news that is wearing us out. Some of us, it's financial issues that is wearing us out. Some of us, it's tragedy that is wearing us out. And, 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 and I think about, man, when the last time somebody asked you how you were doing, when was the last time somebody was like, hey, how are you doing? You're like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm so good right now. I'm so good. I'm, to I'm totally rested and relaxed. It's just amazing. I have more time than I know what to do with. When's the last time you said that? When's the last time you said, I'm bored? When's the last time you said, anybody got some kids that say they're bored? Anybody got kids? Just me. Yeah. I wish I could be bored again. Come on and say amen. I wish I had time to, get, to be bored again. When's the last time you're like, oh, man, I got so, it's so good. I'm hanging out with the family. I'm tickle fighting with my kids. They're 37. I no, but you know, it's a weird, but it's all good. You know, going on date nights with my wife, and you know, my marriage is up and bounce, chicka, wow, wow. It is good. I ain't gonna say nothing, but it's good. Some of y'all are like, is he the real pastor? Oh, I'm the real pastor, yeah. Um, uh, no, when we say, how are you doing? We're like, tired, tired. Oh, I'm busy. Huh? Huh? I'm busy. I'm busy in one arm paper hanger. Oh, I'm busy. I'm busier than a three-legged cat in a room full of rocking chairs. Oh, I'm busy. I, huh, I'm tired. I'm overwhelmed. In fact, I was, at, I was at Walmart a couple weeks ago, and I walked up, and the lady didn't even acknowledge. She be scanning. I'm like, how are you? She looks at me and says, I can't. Anybody been there? Any, anybody there right now? <laughs> yeah, I want to talk to you about that because here's what I know about everybody in the room. We can all end up empty. We can all end up weary where there's not enough sleep and there's too little time and there's too little money and there's too much to do. And we can get to the end of a day and be empty and get to the end of a month and be empty and get to the end of our rope and be empty empty. And here's the problem. I think a lot of times we try to solve this by putting a band-aid on a bullet wound. Because many of us are like, I'm tired. You know what I need? I need more caffeine. So we're going to try to caffeine away. Oh, I need caffeine. I just need more caffeine. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need a, 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 a Americano with three shots. I need a thing. I need the energy drink. I need that prime thing. I need, to, I need all of these things. And some of you are like, I don't, you know, I tried caffeine. I need protein. If you're going to burn calories, you got to have protein. You need protein. Some of you are like, I need some me time. I just need some me time. Oh, you like, I need a vacation. <laughs> if you're tired, the last thing you need is a vacation. Because vacation is where you leave your house and do more than you ever did during a work week and come home tired. <laughs> I told my wife, I need a restcation. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Kids in school, me at the house. That's what I need. I don't... I ain't going nowhere. No, 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 no. See, many times what we try to do to address our weariness, our tiredness, our exhaustion is we, try, we treat the symptom and never identify the root. And the reality is weariness happens when the burden is greater than the capacity. If you like extra notes, you might want to jot that down. Weariness happens when the burden is greater than the capacity. And here's what I know about everybody in the room. We all have limits, but God doesn't. And God knows that you can't do it all without him, but he can. God knows that we get tired. God knows that we get weary, but he doesn't. That's why I want to give you three things to help you win against weariness today. The first one is this, if you're taking notes, jot it down. We got to learn to rely on the strength that God provides. Rely on the strength that God provides. I can be tempted to do life in my own strength. 
I can be tempted to do life in my own ability, my own power, my own know-how. Uh, a, a phrase that when somebody asks me, hey, what about this? What about that? I don't know why I say it sometimes. I don't know why I'm a people pleaser, but sometimes I'm like, oh, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. And I was like, don't you already have all these other things to do? Yeah, I'm like, why didn't you tell them you could do that? I'm like, I don't know why I don't know you could do that. And then I begin to understand. The reason I do that is because I, I, I think I can do more in my head than I can. Um, there's, a, there's a fitness guy that somebody had sent me a, a reel of, and I'm not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not validating him. You don't need to go watch him because after I watched a few of them, his language, I couldn't handle it. Uh, but his name's David Goggins. Anybody seen David Goggins? And, and he's a Navy SEAL guy, military guy. But the one he sent me, he's running with, like, with a log or a, uh, probably a weight. I think it was a weight bag on his back. And he's like, who's going to carry the boats? Who's going to carry the logs? And he's a Navy SEAL. I was like, I am. <laughs> Sitting in my bed with my AC, I am. <laughs> I went to the garage. I got a little gym out there, not a big gym, I got a little gym. I ain't got no boats, no logs. I start looking around my garage. I got an office chair out there. <laughs> I ain't lying, y'all. I picked the office chair up. I put it on the back. I rolled up my garage door. I'm running around my neighborhood. Who's going to carry the boat? Who? That little spinny thing in the bottom, the wheels start hitting me in the head. I'm like, I'm not carrying this anymore. You know? Because I've always overcommitted to things I want to do, but I run out of the strength, energy, or time to accomplish. And sometimes I got to go know what to say no to so that I can rock wholly on what God has asked me to do. And the reality is relying on my own strength, it has me in, I live life in the wrong direction when I'm relying on my own strength. I live life lacking a spiritual connection with the God of heaven when I rely on my own strength. I want you to notice what Paul said that we can get from the scriptures if we lean into it. For everything, verse number four, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. Okay, Paul. So that through the, say the word with me, endurance, come on, say it with me, one, two, three, endurance, taught in the scriptures, that you're going to have to endure some things, go through some things, and the, here's the other E word, the what, encouragement, they provide in us that we might have hope. If you believe God's word, you don't have to live life with a weariness of soul. I think the reason it is so hard to read the Bible, the reason it's so hard to build this habit in your life, the devil knows if you ever really get to know the God in this book, it will, he will give you the strength you need. He will give you the encouragement you need. He will give you the endurance you need to accomplish what he has assigned for your life. Here's my problem. We can never live a supernatural natural faith in our natural strength. You got to look to Christ because if you look to people, you will be disappointed. If you look to the government, you will be disillusioned. If you look to the scriptures, you will find endurance and encouragement. If you're with me, say amen. Let, let me give you some encouragement today. If you're a believer, a Bible person, go ahead and throw on that next slide. Let me give you some encouragement. This should be encouraging you. Rest is biblical. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The God in heaven that loves you and sent his son for you created a top 10 list. Don't murder, take a day off. That's a good God. Rest is biblical. Rest is, some of you, some of you don't need to do, you need to go home and take a nap in Jesus' name. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, Jesus said it like this in Matthew 11, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. I'm going to give you rest. Some of us, Elijah in the Old Testament, he, he ran out of his strength. He ran out of his power. And the Bible says that he ran and he fell under a broom brush tree. And he prayed that God might kill him. He was so tired he wanted to die. God's like, boy, we got too much to do for you to be dying now. Go read it. Go read it. It's amazing. Here's the TFV. He said, take a nap eat a protein pancake, and drink some Gatorade because we got work to do. Some of you don't need to quit church. You don't need to quit faith. You don't need to quit your small group. You need to go home and take a stinking nap, eat a protein pancake, get up in the morning and say, I got to call a God on my life. 
Let me give you some encouragement from the scriptures. I don't have enough power. Well, power is available. Let me give you some encouragement. The Acts 1.8 says that the Spirit of God, when he descends upon you, you will receive power. There is power in a supernatural relationship with God. Now, supernatural power doesn't come from a superficial relationship. Supernatural power doesn't come from casual church attendance. Supernatural power comes when, he, when I place myself in the proximity of his presence to the truth of his word to be endowed with spiritual power. Ephesians, Paul, Paul prays it like this, may God strengthen you in your inner being. It's going to come from the inside. Let me give you some encouragement. Believe, unbelievable is still possible. Oh, the same God that split the Red Sea in Exodus, the same God we sung to today. Oh, unbelievable. It's still possible. I put the John verse up there because John, at the end of his gospel, he said, were the, were the books of the world to contain all that Jesus did in his life, there wouldn't be enough books to contain it. He's that good. So the same God that split the Red Sea, the same God you sing to. The same God that, that, that took five loaves and two fishes and fed, fed a multitude, it's the same God that we sing to. What am I telling you? The encouragement is simply this. If he he did it then, he can do it again. If he used them, he can use you. If he provided for them, he can provide for you. If he blessed them, he can bless you. If he loved them, he can love you. If he changed them, he can change you. If he did it then, he can do it again. Come on and say amen. Now, I grew up Pentecostal. I'd be yelling on that. I'd be ready to take a lap. Ah, encouragement. Let's go. Yeah. But there's another E word in there. I don't like that word. The other word, go back to my verse, go back to my verse. Endurance. Woo. That sounds like, that, that, mm, that sound like a work word. <laughs> endurance. I don't like endurance. Endurance means you got to put up with stuff for a long time. It means how much can you carry for how long? Somebody's got to carry the boat and logs, you know. Endurance. Paul said, God's going to give you the encouragement that if he did it then, he can do it again. Not only that, he's going to give you the endurance. Why do I need endurance, Paul? Because everything God promised people took a lot longer than they wanted. God promised Abraham a child in Genesis chapter 12. You'll have a child. Abraham's like, awesome. 25 years later. 25. Children of Israel leave. Egypt, you go into the promised land. Awesome. 40 years later. We'd be reading a verse like, and they were in slavery 40, 400 years. I'm like, oh man, that stinks. Next verse. You know, so, no, it's one verse in your Bible, but it's real time. And, and what we have to develop in our life is to rely on God's strength to endure the journey. That He's going to give you endurance that you need, He's going to give you the strength that you need. So you got to hang in there. You got to press in. Storms don't last forever, but sometimes they do last for a while. And you need the endurance of Jesus because sometimes it's a long way from the moment that God saves you to the moment that God's going to deliver you or do something in your life or we're going to eat maybe one day be in heaven and we have to rely on the strength that God provides. Number 2 is this. You want to win against weariness? Number 2. Change your attitude about people. Ah, we about to have fun. Ah, you got to change your attitude about people. Some of us are worn out. We are weary because other people are living rent-free in our head. How many of y'all know what the word rent-free means? Y'all know what rent All right, how many have no idea what rent-free is? Ask a Gen Zer, all right? Ask, ask a Gen Zer. Some of y'all are worn out. Nothing can zap your strength like drama. Oh, some of y'all, some of y'all need a new motto. You had a motto in January. Let me give you a motto for October. You need to be drama free the rest of 2023 in Jesus' name. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> chill out. Some of y'all need to chill. What about what, 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 chill out? Just chill out. Everybody say those two words. One, two, three. Chill out. <laughs> Somebody look at the person that you've been wanting to say that. And say, I'm just repeating after the pastor. One, two, three. Yeah. Chill out. <laughs> chill out. You got to chill out. Your attitude about others 
reflects your spiritual maturity. Notice what Paul says. Look at verse 5. So the scriptures give me strength and encouragement. Notice this. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement, check this out, also give you the same, say it with me, attitude of mind toward who? Each other that Christ Jesus had. Some of us are exhausted and weary and overwhelmed and stressed and burnt out because we can't get along with stinking anybody. And if everybody in your life and everybody on your new feeds has the problem, you may need to go look in the mirror because you might have a problem. You got to change your attitude about people. And I've seen it. I've seen it in the lobby. Oh, let me tell you about so-and-so. Let me tell you about so-and-so. People come to me. Let me tell you about this church. I wish people had a block button. You know, I wish... I give you permission to thump somebody on the head talking about other people. <laughs> Blow a whistle if they complain and just, hey, did you hear about? <laughs> nope. <Yeah. laughs> you know what the block button means? The block button means they keep talking, but I don't have to listen to it. So you all need to block some people in your life. You got, yeah, I mean, there's too many people going through here. And here's the deal. If you want to win against weirdness, you got to change your attitude about people anyway. And here's the world's mindset. The world's mindset about people is I don't need people. In fact, the world's mindset about people is less people, less problem. The world's mindset about people is look out for number one, look out for me, look out for mine. The world's mindset on people has to be changed because here's the deal. If you change your attitude about people, you learn that we don't fight people. We fight the devil and love people. That's what we do. We don't beat people up. We help people up because many of us are spending our energy fighting the wrong enemy. Here's the deal. We don't beat people up because we wasn't always Sunday school Sally. You wasn't always Deacon Day. You wasn't always Elder Eddie. You wasn't always Halo Holly. Come on, somebody. There was a time in your life that you were bound in sin, stuck in addiction. There was a time in your life that you were greedy, that you were, there was a time in your life that you threw a pity party. There was a time in your life that you were angry. But thanks be to God that he reached a mighty hand down and picked you up and said, Sit you on a solid ground. Never, never forget where you came from because if you do, you won't help anybody else who's still there. You better change your attitude about people. I started thinking about Jesus because it says that, that he's going to give me the same attitude about others that Jesus had. So I just asked the question. This is good Bible study. What kind of attitude did Jesus have? Now, if, you do, if you're in a small group, a sermon discussion, this is not going to pop up on the on screen, but if you're, a ser- if you're a small group leader, jot these down. Y'all talking about them in your groups this week. The first thing I jotted down is that Jesus was patient. Did you see how, Je- how patient Jesus was with the disciples? Oh, oh man. It gave me hope. Did you- I love that my Jesus is patient with dumb people. You'll get it. You should be excited about that, too. (laughs) He was patient with these boys. Not like this, like that. Don't think like this, think like that. Don't pray like this, pray like that. He he was patient with the broken. He he was patient with with the woman with the issue of blood. He was patient. He was patient with Jairus. He didn't tell Jairus, you're a synagogue leader. I ain't got no time for you. No, he was patient. He was patient. He was a servant. He was patient. I saw, but here's the deal. We, we, all, we, like, we like, like hippie Jesus. You know, peace, love, and happiness Jesus in a, v, in, in a VW van down by the river. You know what I'm saying? But Jesus was also truthful. Now, here's the deal. He didn't say tolerate to you. Jesus loves the sinner, but he didn't tolerate sin. Jesus hung out with sinners, yeah, but he didn't become like them. He was truthful. He actually set boundaries. He told people that he forgave and he'll go and sin no more. He thought sin was real. Jesus thought sin had a separating effect on your relationship with God. Jesus didn't teach us anything. Go, just live your truth. No, he says there is a truth. You need to live the truth. You don't make up your own truth. He set boundaries. I mean, he, the greatest disciple, arguably the greatest disciple, Peter, he called Satan. That's pretty good. I mean, he loved Peter, but he's like, hey, get behind me, Satan. Now, I don't, 
I don't say you go home and do that to your wife, but hey, you know. <laughs> or your husband, that's right, that's right. He set boundaries. He was truthful. But the one I thought about most is he was relational. If there was anybody in the history of the world that didn't need anybody, it was Jesus, the Son of God. If there was anybody that ever walked this planet that didn't need nobody else to help them, it was Jesus. But Jesus chose to put himself in community with 12 other dudes to show us that we're going to have to have people in our life and we got to learn how to get along. The Apostle Paul in Romans, he said, or excuse me, in Ephesians, he says the same thing again to my Ephesians first. So he doubles down on this to the church in Ephesus and he says this, be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with, say it with me, one another in love. Paul knew you were going to need people. Paul had Timothy. Elijah had Elisha. Moses had Aaron. Batman had Robin. Come on, somebody. Not in the Bible, but I thought you needed to know, all right? Paul knew they were going to need other people, but he also knew that they may not like other people. Over 56 times in the New Testament version of your Bible, there are 56 one another's in Scripture. 56. Love one another. Be devoted to one another. Build up one another. Honor one another. I'm not going to read all 56. Calm down. But here's the <laughs> But there's one in there that gets me. Paul said in one, one verse, he said, he said, tolerate one another. I like that. Because he's like, if you can't love them, if you can't help them, at least tolerate them. I at least do that. And I'm like, I can do that, I can do that. And some people in your life, you're going to need to tolerate. You're going to just need to tolerate them and love them from a distance in Jesus' name, right? What I took from all of this, though, is that I got to love people anyway. Well, you know, people are mean. I'm going to love them anyway. People are jerks. I'm going to love them anyway. People don't say thank you anymore. I'm going to help them anyway. People are hard-headed. I'm going to share Christ with them anyway. I want to be found faithful at the task that God gave me. I want to make sure that I'm not letting them affect my view of him because my life is built on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I want to be obedient and faithful to everything he asked me to do so I can be in the place that he has, me, has for me to be. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Number three, number one, you got to get this. If you want to win against weariness, you got to do one, two, three. And number three is this, do the right thing for a long time. So rely on God's strength, change your attitude about people, and then do the right thing for a long time. Woo, because we, we like instant results. Woo, we go to the gym, we want instant abs. An hour gym session can't cure 10 years of Krispy Kreme, I'm going to tell you. I know that from experience. I'll tell you right now. We want, we want instant results. Well, we eat a salad one day, get on the scale. Somebody did this. I, 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 I leave the guilty, part, guilty party anonymous uh, person I know. They said, I ate a salad. Uh, it was on this Monday. Um, so I've been good this week. Ate one salad. I've been good this week. I can eat cake. I'm like, you ate one salad. That ain't, no, you got to do that for, you got to, you got to be good for a long time in your eating. You got to be good. You got to go work out for a long time. Do the right thing for a long time. Pastor Matt, you remember that book, uh, Eugene Pitts? Yeah. A long obedience in the same direction. A long obedience in the same direction. You, People, oh, I tried that church thing, it didn't work. How long? Because there's, there's some people in this room that's been in this church 14 years and they say it's working just fine. There's some people in this room that's been in the church for 30 years and it's working just fine. But it can't be a start and a stop and I'm going to do, and I'm going to no, no, do the right thing for a long time. You got to follow Jesus for a long time. You got to get to know the God of this book for a long time. You gotta do it for a long time. And if you do, here's what Paul says. Let us not become weary, because we got endurance and encouragement in doing good, for at the proper time you will reap a what? Harvest. Caveat, most people wanna stop right there. If you do not give up. 
in a world that applauds your start. I want to learn to celebrate your finish. I want to learn to celebrate consistency. Because here's what I know. I don't care what any sports team, what any coach tells you. I don't care about modern culture. There are no trophies handed out at the starting line. Don't grow weary. Don't give up. It's, it's a principle. We have to understand that harvest comes later. Will you bow your heads? Will you close your eyes with me? Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. God, I pray that we would not become weary in doing good. I pray that we would lean hard on your truth, hard on your understanding, hard on your strength, Lord, not on our own. Before we leave today, I do want to give an opportunity for people in this room that are living life far from God to trust him. Because some of you have listened to this message and you really are, you're doing life your own way. You're doing life in your ability, the way you desire. Some of you even prayed a prayer one time, but you are living life as if there is no God. And I want to tell you today, there's a better way. There's a better way than doing it your way. There's a better way than living your truth. There's a better way than trying to figure it out on your own. There's a God in heaven that loves you so much, has a divine purpose over your life, sent his one and only son to die on a Roman cross to pay your sin and my sin debt so that we could be restored to relationship with him. And you're here and you're living life separated. And here's the deal. You need to understand that if you meet him in eternity, without a right relationship, without trusting him as your savior, living, at, living for him as your Lord, you will spend eternity separated from him. There's a better way. There's a better way. So if you're here today and you say, hey, you know what, I've, I've watched the baptism, I've listened to the music and the message, and I'm separated from God. I need to trust Jesus today. I need that forgiveness you talk about. I need that grace you talked about, Pastor. Then here, I'll give you a no-hassle guarantee today. I'm not going to call you up front. You don't have to walk an aisle, sign a card. I just want to know who you are. So I'm going to count to three, and I just want you to shoot your hand in the air and make eye contact with me, and then we'll pray, okay? Right where you are. One, two, three. Get them up. Over here, yes, 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 ma'am, yes, sir, yes. Anybody else? Yes in the back. Yes, right here. Yes, right here. Today's a great decision. It's the greatest day ever. It's the greatest day. I'm not going to live in my own strength. Amen. Anybody else before we pray? Hallelujah. Thank you so much for even making that step to raise your hand. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray a prayer together. The entire room, the entire sound out in the lobby, stop what you're doing. Nothing's more important than what's happening right here, right now. And here's what I want you to know. There is no saving power in reciting a prayer after a pastor, but we're going to recite a prayer. The Bible says there is saving faith when you call on God with faith. So when you pray this with faith in your heart, he hears you from heaven. So let's pray together. Come on, everybody say, dear God. Come on, everybody. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. Today, I trust you for the forgiveness of my sin. I desire to follow you all the days of my life. Thank you for the gift of grace and my new life in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And here's what the Bible says when we pray things like that with faith in our heart, that our God in heaven hears us on the earth. And when that happens, here's what the Bible says, when sinners repent, angels rejoice. When sinners repent, he, he, he takes your sin and he casts them as far as the east is from the west. And you have been redeemed and renewed. Come on, will you stand to me all over this place? And I'm telling you, in a moment like that, you keep going toward God. You keep pressing in. You keep running the race. Don't give up. Keep showing up because hope is on the horizon. Don't give up. Keep showing up because God is still redeeming. God's still bringing joy. God's still... Come on, if you believe